you're gonna hang, witch. Hey guys, it's Steak Sauce here from the Off the Grill podcast. Vamos por dentro. Estamos hablando de hora. I had to do something, man. I don't think I can uh, physically make my voice go any higher than last episode. So, how we went Spanish? What are you gonna do? But it's good to see you. Thanks for tuning in. Um, as you could no doubt tell by the title and the old uh, background here. Talking Fear Street 1978, part two of the Fear Street trilogy. Um, it debuted on Netflix uh, July 9th, 2021. As I said last week with Fear Street 1994, I could not find any of the budget information. I don't know if I just didn't look hard enough or if it's not available. Either way, nothing I could do. Um... Before we get into it, I do want to just say that I really did enjoy um, Fear Street 1978 even more than I did 1994, which I did have quite a bit of fun with. <clears throat> but without further ado, let's get into the good. So I think one of the first things right off the bat um, with this movie, the camp setting, all that sort of stuff. The uh, the homage to kind of 80 slashers, really. You know, not not necessarily Friday the 13th as much as, you know, uh, one might think initially. Like, if, if they just heard the synopsis or, you know, word of mouth from somebody. But um, heavy sleepaway camp vibes. Heavy um, the burning vibes. <clears throat> for sure. Because, I mean, there's actually kids at the camp. It's not, you know. Just a bunch of camp counselor, you know, later teenaged um, individuals getting picked off. <clears throat> and I think also immediately, or really early on, rather, not immediately, but it, it's very evident, how, I think, that they put more time and effort into um, character development. You know, at least so far as, you know, they've brought you characters that, you know, there's at least a couple that you don't want to die, you know, when you're, you kind of grip it onto the, the armrest or, you know, whatever you happen to be seated at the time, trying to go, oh, anytime they might be in peril, um, which I think was a huge improvement over 1994, because those kids, for whatever reason, none of them really stood out as uh, being the guy or the girl, you know, whichever way you want to phrase it. Um, this one does, I think, early on, um, Ziggy is kind of shown to be the main focus with her sister Cindy being like, you know, 1A. Um, <clears throat> now, with that, immediately the nurse lane misdirection was really effective to me, I think, um, you kind of think maybe, you know, after she tries to kill Tommy early on, you know, and they take her away, then maybe she's somehow going to escape and get back to the camp. Um, obviously, that doesn't happen. And before going further, I guess I should say, you know, heavy spoilers in this. I mean, it's, I'm not, I'm not here for like a spoiler free review. I don't find those to be very much fun. Like, it's just kind of a waste of everyone's time, in my opinion. Um, but, you know, I'll throw a, uh, a caution to everyone at the beginning, like I did last week too, just, you know, just so everything's even. Another thing that was pretty effective to me, I do like it, even though I kind of hate it. Um, when Alice has the, her, she sees the witch and panics and she breaks her shin. <laughs> compound fracture um it's very effective very fucking gross also um that's something that'll get me every time any kind of um, compound fracture specifically to do with the legs yeah fuck man 
you know, I could deal with all sorts of dead chopping and stabbing and, you know, bloodletting, this, that, and the other. You know, pretty much anything you can throw at me, but, you know, fucking bone bust through the leg. That's <laughs> all she wrote for this guy. <laughs> um, but honestly, like, all of the kills even in the movie are a lot more vicious looking than uh, Fear Street 1994. On top of that, there's a lot more deaths in this one. You know, like they like they gave us a body count. Um, you know, that being said, I mean, it's a minor gripe. It's not bad enough to go in the bad, but none of them are terribly creative. I mean, it's pretty pretty simple kind of stalk and slash sort of uh, fair, but I don't hate it at all. And it's definitely ratcheted up the violence from, you know, part one to now. Um, and I think especially in the climax, Cindy's death is really effective because you see not only the axe go into her chest, the blood spray, but the impact, like the body like convulses and, you know, as he's, as one, as he hits into her over and over and then as he's pulling out, like it's fucking brutal, man. I like it. Another great thing, the character Gary. Um, played by, I forgot his name, but uh, played by the, the same cat in that was in Halloween 2018. Um, basically, same plays the same character. He gets his fucking head just chopped right the fuck off. What are you doing? And that just made me feel good. Um, I don't know. You know, maybe other people didn't dig that as much as I did. But, yeah, that was something that, in my opinion, needed to happen. Uh, and the soundtrack in this one is so much better. So much better than the 94 one. And a lot of that, I guess, is taste. You know, it's just musical taste. People are going to have different opinions on it. I get it. But for me, it's a big plus. You throw Kansas in there, the Runaways, Blue Oyster Cult, David Bowie, you know, just, you know, and, and moving on from there, um, you know, it definitely gets you into the time period. And they did a lot better job of kind of massaging that into the movie rather than it just sounding like, hey, remember the 90s? Which, you know, is what they did, you know, in uh, part one. You know, the kind of shit's being played over the radios, the different, you know, different radios when, uh, you know, like when Alice is getting plowed out in, uh, in one of the cabins. <sighs> That's not a great thing. I mean, there's a lot, they didn't like shy away from it. It's not as much as maybe, you know, an actual vintage slasher would have had, but, you know, we got, we got some naked bodies, you know, from the, from the older, the actual counselors, not the campers, thank God. <laughs> you know, I got a little boob action and some butts, you know, male and female, not bad, good to go. You know, there was enough to you know, kind of satiate that appetite, I'd say. Um, I was absolutely gutted this whole time with this movie. I could say kind of a, it was a good twist at the end of this movie. It's probably um, one of the better ones I can think of because... You have, they give you this knowledge, um, you know, C. Vernon in the first one. Um, so you think, oh, Cindy. Cindy starts with C, C. Vernon, perfect. That's who it is, you know. But they give you this knowledge. They set you up. They do a good job of that, in my opinion. I mean, maybe I'm an idiot. Maybe everyone else in the world saw it coming, but I didn't. Um, so a whole movie, I was just like, I, I Gravitated towards Ziggy right away. Um, that, that to me, that was their best character work. And, uh, you know, kind of mouthy, brassy, brash, kind of you know, redhead broad. I liked her. She's fucking you know, just as nihilistic as I am. You know, everything's fucked. Whatever. Just you know, who cares? You know, we're shady side assholes and nothing's gonna go right. I get it. I, I dig that a lot. I, I identify with that a lot. So 
like I said, I was gutted the entire movie knowing that, you know, she was going to be the sister that died. Um, I love that. You know, that was a nice bit of misdirection in my opinion. You know, that was one of those things. Anytime she was in danger or close to danger, I was like, oh, shit. No, 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 no. No, not her. Please, no. No. Thankfully, we find out that, uh, you know, we find out that C. Vermin was Ziggy, in fact. Um, which is fantastic for me. Um, you know, and it just kind of goes to show you don't always have to overthink a twist. You know, and I'm looking right at you, Mr. M. Knight, okay? Shamalad. Shut up. Go back to Philadelphia, you fucking dork. So, with all that being said, let's move on to the bet. Um, and I know I listed this here, this first piece of uh, badness, um, in the good, but it's my fucking show and it's going in the bad too. That fucking shin break was nasty and fuck them for putting it in there. I don't appreciate this kind of shabby treatment. And what made it worse is they showed Cindy fixing it for Alice and then getting her all, uh, you know, braced and wrapped up so she fucking actually walk on it, but I mean, god damn it, just look at it. I am a snitch. The day after we stole Mr. Evans's JVC player, Harold Hines saw me with it. Fucking Harold Hines. <laughs> That's fucking nasty. But again, I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, it's just a personal thing. I fucking hate that shit. But it's effective. So that's why it's going in both. It's bad for me, but it also, it got its desired effect. But it can kiss my ass, god damn it. Um, so now we're kind of going to pull again from the good and pull it into the bad. Now as great as it was to see Gary get his fucking head chopped off, I hated seeing this goddamn mongoloid in the movie in the first place. Again, I don't remember the cat's name. It's not important. But he played the same stupid fucking character in this one as he did in Halloween 2018, and I didn't like it then. Just admit you're jealous that the witch wanted your hubby all to herself. Be serious, man. Come on. Why would Nurse Mary want to do something like that? Why would she, why would she want me dead? Oh, no, she wouldn't. But, but the, the witch, witch might. might. <gasps> you guys are just barf. You know, you're just you're two yucky dumpsters, and I want to go diving. Come here. Oh, dude, right here, dude. right here, right? Oh. You got your little chap lift crusties all over me, man, so thanks. I know. And you're welcome. It's gross. It's a little part of me for you. The rest of your day. What the fuck's gonna make you think I want to see the same thing three years later? <laughs> Nothing! He sucks! Fucking Rocky Dennis head. Beat it! Terrible bit of casting. And next thing. Let's, let's calm down. Let's move on. Let's keep it rolling, okay? They killed the fat nerd kid. I have no problem with that. I love that. I thought that was fucking cool. But they did it off screen. And that I didn't appreciate. Um, I think, you know, I commend them, honestly, for killing kids. You know, shout out Casey Anthony. Uh... You know, I love you, babe, but I think they should have had the balls to just go ahead and at least kill one of these, the kids on screen, because they kill a couple more after they kill the nerd kid. But who didn't want to see the nerd kid just get the axe? I mean, it doesn't have to be some crazy death. Just put the fucking the axe in the kid's chest or in his head or something. Do something! Just one of them. Just kill one kid on screen for me, please. I guess that's too much to ask. Um, yeah, what are you gonna do? At least they did kill him at the end of the day. <laughs> so, the next gripe was kind of a big one. It's the same, it's a similar gripe that I had with uh, 94. It's still way too long. This is almost two hours again. 
Um, you could probably cut like the buildup because like it's nice that it doesn't like, you know, they don't. Oh, yeah, it's, you know, ADHD, ADD, whatever. You gotta get right to it. It's nice that they kind of bring you along. You know, they do show you a little bit of what happened in the first one to kind of bring you up to speed. Like that's kind of old school. Um, I mean, one, it's old school TV, but it's also old school Friday the 13th. You know, the first 20 minutes, every fucking uh, mid-franchise sequel was, you know, a, a recap of the, the last four or five or six movies, you know, however many there had been. At the time, obviously, you understand how counting and, and you know, progression works. <laughs> but... He didn't need as much kind of build up and a lot of the. He didn't need two different scenes of Cindy cleaning, I don't think. Um, and I mean, when Cindy and Alice are down in the cave, you could have cut probably one or two of the, you know, of their dialogues back. Because I mean, I get it, like they were kind of. Uh, called upon to be Mr. Johnny Explainer or Mrs. Johnny Explainer. You know, maybe uh, J-O-N-N-I-E. So, feminine twist on it, huh? How you like that? How you like that, ladies? Isn't that nice? Representation. Cool. Um, but I think they could have figured it out in, in less kind of, you know, just, just keep us with the fucking axe, man. All right? Um, yeah, it, it, it's... I think it does run a little better than the first one does. There was more action, more kills, so it kind of kept my interest a little better for them to be able to pull it off and me not kind of like check out. But would have been better for sure if they went ahead and cut some of that back. It'd give us a nice like 80, 85 minute throwback slasher. That would have been. I think that would have made this. That would probably bumped up this movie like two points even, like two whole fucking. Points on whatever grading scale I'm not giving this. Um, the last thing that really kind of bugged me about this movie that I can think of, um, the character Sheila, who in the beginning we see is kind of the ringleader in stringing up Ziggy and, you know, threatening to set her on fire. She actually does burn her. I mean, like, she's a fucking, like, super villain, which all these, like, 80s... 70s and 80s, like nostalgia trips, these retro movies or whatever. I don't know, whatever you want to say. Um, the bullies are like just every fucking new movie that comes out, the bullies are meaner and meaner. It's crazy. But, and I get that, you know, Ziggy didn't get to knock her the fuck out. But she was unrelentingly shitty the whole movie and just got away with it. You know, like, yeah, she got punched and she'd get a face full of bugs and shit, but, you know, maybe I would have preferred she got a face full of, uh, well, well, never mind. But, yeah, the fact that nothing happened to her and she, she was like this close to the fucking, to Tommy, you know, the old axe man, and didn't get it. Because, I mean, she was knocked out, I guess, it kind of saved her, but fuck, dude. She should have gotten more than just a punch in the face and some little bugs thrown at her. <laughs> but, you know, be that it is me, let's wrap this up. So at this point, I mean, all we really have left to do is kind of crown that MVP and get to the kill of the night. Um, and now, this was tough. A lot tougher than 94 was for sure. Um, well, Alice and, you know, um, both Venkman sisters, they made a run for the crown. You know, it was pretty close. Alice is, uh, you know, kind of a smart ass. I dig it, you know. Not afraid to fuck around with drugs and premarital sex. You know, anything like that. Uh, Cindy had her head up her ass for most of the movie, but when she kind of, you know, popped that out and kind of came to grips with what she was dealing with. Maybe that shady side curse is real, you know. Uh, made her much more, or much easier to root for. But at the end of the day, guys, I think the choice was obvious pretty early on. 
Sadie Sink's turn as Ziggy Vernon is pretty top notch. You, you know, um, played a pretty decent final girl, but you know, I mean, she's brash and mouthy. And as you guys have seen in the past, that scores a lot of points with me. I mean, hey, who doesn't love the weird girl? You know? Ziggy, way to go. Sadie, whatever. Great fucking job. Uh, but I guess that takes us to kill of the night. And that one, like I said, this one had a lot more kills, first off, which was great. None of them were terribly inventive, so that still did kind of make the decision decision tough. But I'm going with that shovel decapitation when Cindy, uh, you know, fucking just pops Tom's head off with the shovel. Now, technically it didn't kill him, but it was the coolest looking thing in the movie, in my opinion. So, Cindy and her shovel are taking home kill of the night. So that's kind of all I really have on this. What did you guys think of this movie? Um, what did you guys think of it in terms of how it stacked up to part one? Now, I know, obviously, I'm recording this even as all three are already out. You've probably seen the third one already. What, if you can kind of recall, I mean, in the comments, what you were kind of expecting going into seeing 1666, um, you know, and as I said last week, next week, the 30th, um, I'll put out part three. And then we'll have ourselves a nice trilogy all wrapped up. Won't that be great? But yeah, guys, let me know in the comments below any of your thoughts on this movie, how you felt about it, this, that, and the other. Um, but before I leave, I do want to thank all of my patrons. Uh, Big Crack Rock, Hayes Met Devon Graham, Christian Hanahar, S'mores and Doors, Nick Ridza, Jay the Stingray, Jess Graham, Orc145626, Daniel Shine. Lauren Dixon, Mr. Bobastic, RetroCack, The Daily Ghost, and Slot Report. Um, if you want to be a part of this terrific crew, um, you can head to patreon.com slash off the grill podcast, uh, where you get early access to all my talk and horror videos, reviews that I'll do occasionally. And I am working on a few new things that, at least for the time being, would be Patreon only. Um, so as I said, head over there if you're into that. But that'll do it for me. So until next time, take care and remember, Iris loves you. <laughs>